with it, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video here of a product, TP-Link Deco Mesh Wi-Fi Router. So this was sent in uh, as a challenge by someone who's been watching my videos and asked if I could have a crack at it, see how I might uh, sort of approach this interesting form on the top here. I'll just show you a few photos. So it's a surface that sort of um, revolves uh, around a central axis and as it revolves it changes in section so that's the challenge that was the challenge um, I think I've got it pretty well nailed uh, I've put some little fillets and what have you on there um, they're not that pretty in spots but they're not really the focus of the challenge um, so I might just roll back through this model and show how I got to this point so it's a fairly uh, fluid result on the top surface as well reading these zebras um, yeah Okay, I'll just roll back through things, turn the edges on so you can see what's going on, and let's have a look. Okay, first things first, there's a 100mm circle uh, that gets extruded up to this plane, which is 100 mils high. So we have the surface extrude. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I'm using 2021 now. I upgraded uh, the other day. I haven't put 2022 on, I've downloaded it. Um, but yeah, just 2021 for now because I had to uh, problem shoot some files the other day on it. Um, so yeah. Okay, and then created a, a small surface around the top, which is 0.5 millimeters wide. I'm following, um, I'm following the, uh, the guide of uh, Jamie who sent me this uh, file in regards to that little surface around the top. Okay, and then I've created a uh, line 83 degrees again following the dimensions I was sent I don't have this product in front of me so and then for the bottom of the uh, the bottom section it is a line at 96 degrees of the vertical uh, running into a busy earth style spline with uh, degree 3 so uh, curvature continuous here because so this is a line so I've aligned my polygon control polygon segments and an angle control on the end and then a distance in for the uh, the spline oh and that's that plane that this is on is at oh it's gone it's gone missing it's over here that plane is at 45 degrees Okay, I'm just going to hide this outside cylinder because it's a bit distracting. Okay, next up was how to do this kind of rail revolve thing, um, but going to a point uh, and then go from a line to this other section as it revolves around. So that took a bit of head scratching. Uh, in the end, what I decided to do was was this. I created a an arc that terminates at the end of the style spline here and runs right round to the top. I then extruded that arc down to this point. So what I want to do is set up a sweep, um, not a sweep sorry, a loft um, that uses one of these edges as the uh, center line. And then I want to create uh, two arcs that run from this point down to this point because I need to create like my spiral, like a spiral guide because I'm not going to do this um, outer surface as, I'm not going to try and do this all as one sort of surface with a singularity. Okay, so next up I had to create a plane and this plane is uh, normal to this end of the uh, that edge and then create a sketch that sketch is an arc the arc uh, is coincident to this point down here 
so the low point uh, of the spiral and then the reason I haven't created this as a full circle is because when you create it off then I have to control where the um, I can twist the the tube can twist so I don't want that to happen so by having an open section um, I've got control over that and then I've done the same thing over here I've created a plane through this point uh, normal to the edge and then I've created another arc that is coincident with the intersection between these two edges and then we've lofted those so this loft here two sections and then a center line and don't turn don't put a normal profile on here because it just creates issues with the surface being smooth in the middle later on okay so once I've done that I've extended this bottom surface here a little bit because we need to intersect the uh, loft with the surface and I was just a bit worried that because those were coincident the uh, 3D sketch intersection curve might not um, you know it might be a little bit short okay and then I just created a 3D sketch 3D sketch is intersection curve between these two surface bodies okay I'll hide that and I'll hide that so now you can see I have this nice um, inner boundary okay next up uh, I've done the same thing except in the middle but on a much smaller scale so again an arc that runs from where the arc touches the lower boundary and the upper boundary or I guess you call them and then again created sections in this case we're using this lower edge as the rail and then I've created the loft as you can see there and again a 3D sketch intersection between this surface and this surface body oh whoops I'll just hide those okay and then I've created this main surface here uh, I want to create the, the flatter surface first um, rather than this curved outer surface because I don't want uh, the curved surface driving the form of the flatter surface because that's a bit the wrong way around so we want the flatter surface driving the curvature of the outer surface so this boundary surface is dead simple it's just those two 3D sketches uh, no direction too because those are lines um, and that's our main inner surface and next up is to create the outer surface so to do so instead of trying to run it right around in one go there'd be an issue with that because we'd have this boundary here which is open because there's a gap there and outside this is a closed boundary right so the boundary surface didn't like that so I decided to split it into two and put a cross curve over here um, and, and in doing so that allows you to if you wanted to you can tweak um, the angle over here I've just made it 50 degrees as I said I don't have the product so I was just guessing a, a number there um, and then the other sketch I've made here is I've just converted entities of the inside of this little um, shelf surface here and trimmed it so it's across the midline there and then that boundary surface is pretty straightforward four boundaries as you can see and the only edge with the constraint is this edge here and I've got tangent 100% uh, tangent influence and we look at the result there it's it looks like it's uh, inherited the without being able to check it properly I could drop it into Rhino I guess um, that looks like it's curved continuous across this boundary here which is nice okay let's jump ahead so I've knitted those together and then I've created the second boundary surface just using the edges of the surface we created the edge of the um, 45 degree angled base and these two other boundaries and in this case we've got tangent on this inside edge and we've also got tangent 
on this edge here. Uh, this is the dominant longest edge here, so I've made that one there. 100% tangent influence, and this one I've just left it at zero. Okay, now I've knitted those together, and then to cap off the middle, very simple. I know I created a singularity, but oh well. Um, literally, just pick these two edges here, and then guide curve is the outside here, without any tangency, uh, any tangent constraint because it fails, and that makes that surface. And if you knit it together, and turn on your zebra stripes and turn your edges off, you can't actually see where those two surfaces meet because they're um. I guess they're kind of like a ruled surface because they're lines. Yeah, so there you go. Pretty happy with that result. Um, once I've figured out how to make these, you know, these sort of spiral control um, curves. Uh, what have we done next? Oh yeah, I've just sort of run a sweep, sweep around the outside to trim out some geometry. Create some variable fillets inside here. Um, I'm not going to go into de detail on this. A um, couple of lofts, which are tangent. Um, trim those back to tidy them up. Knitted it all together. Boundary surface there. Uh, planar surface on the bottom. Knitted it all together. And lastly, this this fillet on the outside here is a face fillet, uh, tangent with a with a um, hold line holding onto this inside edge here. As you can see, there's the hold line edges. And then last but not least, thicken. So, if you're doing this as a production part, probably spend a bit more time tidying up these fillets that run down to points in this singularity in here. Maybe trim out a section and see if there's a better way to get that to work. Um, in case you need to offset things, and that might cause some problems. But generally, pretty happy with the result. So, hope that helped. Jamie, thanks for sending this in. Um, another video, AJ Design Studio. Oh yeah, if you if you do have any ideas, my email address is in the uh, on my channel. So fire and you know ideas like this because this was a good challenge. Really had to think sort of laterally to get these these nice uh, sections running uh, variable height. Cool, Andrew Jackson. Have a good night. See ya.